What's up guys, welcome to a new video. We're actually testing a new product today, which is not something we normally do on this channel, but obviously being an engine building performance channel, uh, with engine building inherently comes just so much cleaning. Uh, so when this company offered me for me to test this product, I did actually jump at it. So you would have seen in a lot of videos, the amount of time we spend out here just washing, degreasing, washing down, cleaning parts, you know, engine building, it's all about cleanliness. Parts have got to be clean enough you'd eat off them before they go on an engine. Uh, so there's just so much cleaning and so much time cleaning involved. So we have here from Viva a 30 litre ultrasonic cleaning unit. Uh, so being the size that it is, my idea was that I think we should be able to fit a whole LS head in this thing, which would just be freaking awesome. <laughs> It'd be so good um, to just chuck an LS in it, head in it for, for 30 minutes, walk away, come back to it just schmick spotless. Um, not to mention obviously all the other little parts that we can clean in it. So super, super handy. Uh, now, obviously they sent it to us. It doesn't come with any solution and most ultrasonic cleaner solution is very, very expensive. So what I have done is I've used CT18. I did some research. They reckon it needs to be a water-based uh, solution and CT18, we use it a lot for cleaning parts anyway. It's safe on all surfaces. Uh, we've already got it, I don't need to buy any of it, and it is water-based. So I've used it quite a bit, quite a bit of it. There's uh, quite a bit of ratio in there. So I've currently got this heating up. I'm gonna give it a test and see how it goes. Because yeah, if this works out for us, freaking hell, it's gonna be so nice. <laughs> so much better than um, spending so much time out there with the gurney and degreaser and stuff, cleaning stuff. It's gonna be so nice to just chuck it in here, walk away, come back, spotless, schmicko. So the unit itself, temperature, temperature control, and then your timer for how long it's actually going to do ultrasonic cleaning. Um, and then we do have a drain tap on the side and they do send you a hose and fittings to set up the drain tap to drain the unit, uh, which is really, really handy. So hopefully as well, we can fit some four cylinder diesel intakes when we want to do ultrasonic cleaning of them. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, for a, you know, a hobbyist setup in a garage, if you do a bit of engine work, if you do a bit of this stuff, something of this size, something like this is going to be super handy. So first thing we're gonna do is test just an old piston, test something old, cause I'm not 100% sure with the ultrasonic and the solution how it's gonna go. Um, so we're gonna test an old piston. I figured a piston's a really good place to start for a test to showcase the product because with an old piston, you've got carbon buildup. Um, you know, it's covered in oil. They're just, they're the grottiest, grimy, carbon covered, gross things that you have to clean, particularly piston ring land grooves and ring grooves and stuff like that, they are such a pain to clean manually. So if this thing, if we can showcase that this thing cleans piston groove, like ring grooves in a piston that are caked in carbon, I think that's pretty much a, uh, <laughs> a good answer to how good this thing is. So let's get one in there and have a look. So the unit does come with a stainless basket for actually putting parts in and out of the tub, because obviously if you're heating the water at the moment, I've got heating to 60 degrees. I think you can go up to 80, the instruction said, but obviously you don't want to be trying to fish parts in and out with your hands. So it is nice that they gave us this little basket, but how good is this gonna be as a test? It is the grottiest, grimiest old, just a gen three piston and rod. I'm gonna leave the rings on it for now, see how it goes and uh, might pull it out after a few, like, you know, after 20 minutes or so and pull the rings off and then try it again, see what the ring grooves do. But as you can see inside that wrist pin's covered in carbon, the piston skirts are covered in carbon. <laughs> you know, the rod's filthy, the piston head covered in carbon buildup, disgusting. So let's see how this big girl goes. I'll just give it a bit longer for it to heat up and then we'll chuck it in. Right, oh, so we're at 40 degrees. Uh, it is taking a while to heat up, which makes sense because it is quite a bit of volume. Uh, it is a 30 liter, the 30 liter model. So it's fairly big really. Uh, so 40 degrees is enough. I'm gonna chuck this in for 20 minutes, allow it to keep heating up while it's cleaning obviously. And we'll have another look at what it looks like in 20 minutes time. Rightio, one piston. Get this happening. Ooh. So I'll also add guys, I'll leave a link to get yours down in the description if you're impressed with it. Um, time will tell, we'll check back in in 20 minutes and see what it's like. But yeah, there'll be a link in the description if you wanna go check it out. It's not vibrating anything else around it. The unit's vibrating, as you can hear. But the actual bench top is not vibrating at all, so. If anyone was uh, interested about that. Righto guys, about our first 20 minute cycle. Oh yeah, the water's looking pretty filthy. Alright, I'm going to need both hands to get this out I think. Woo! 
That's pretty damn good. Look how clean that rod is. That's done a pretty good job. It's done a very good job. Still a bit of carbon on the top there. It's obviously trying to chew through, but um, it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna pull the rings off. I'm gonna chuck it back in for another 20, and then we'll assess it. We'll see what it looks like. Rightio guys, our second round of 20 minutes is done. It's at 65 degrees at the moment. Water's looking fresh. Smells about as good as it looks. <laughs> anyway, let's get it out and have a look. All right, she's looking pretty damn clean and good. Um, you can see in the ring grooves, it's just starting to get the carbon off them and out. Um, so there's a few spots around on the grooves where it's really starting to get rid of that carbon, but there's still quite a bit in there. Um, so what I might do is chuck it back in for another 20 minutes soon, uh, just as a test. It does say in the instructions not to leave the machine running for uh, an hour or at a time. It, essentially, it looks like the duty cycle of the ultrasonic machine is an hour. Uh, so I'd like, I'll probably leave it for a few minutes just to give it a, a break. And then we might chuck it back in for another 20 just as a, a test. Uh, see if how much more it lifts out of those um, ring grooves. But obviously, uh, that was 20 minutes with the rings still on and then 20 minutes with the rings off. So it probably would have looked a lot better if the rings were off to start with. But um, there's like a, a little bit of etching looks like starting to happening on the piston. Um, you can see it's starting, looks like it's starting to etch. Um, probably, you know, 40. We'll see how it looks like after another 20. This is obviously it's a piston that I don't care about. Uh, and it's just for testing purposes to show what's going on. Uh, obviously a little bit of etching is not the end of the world. Um, and you know, 40 minutes is probably pretty excess. Um, ideally, uh, probably looking at doing just one 20 minute for a set of pistons is what you hope and try and get it right in the first one. Um, but even if that means like a bit of a degrease before they go in, still better than trying to clean out them ring grooves with a, a snapped ring or a ring groove cleaner. <laughs> It's uh, anyone, who ever, anyone who's ever done it knows that it's a pain of a process. So we'll do some more testing first and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens to this piston. We'll see how it looks in those ring grooves after another 20, see if they're any cleaner, and then we'll see if it uh, etches it any further uh, after another 20. And then uh, what we might do is get another piston after that, maybe tomorrow, uh, drain the machine, um, maybe just put water in it with no additive and just see how it goes with just water uh, with a piston and see if it, changes the etching, uh, you know, see if it's actually the, just the process or whether it's um, the, the additive that we use in the CT18. So either way, um, obviously for steel parts, that's not a drama and the, you can how clean that rod is compared to what it was. It's freaking wild, awesome. Uh, and then obviously our ring, look how clean, look how clean that ring is. It was just caked in carbon, pretty cool. And the proof's in the pudding as well. Look at that water compared to what it was. She's filthy, see where all that grimy and grit is going but um yeah still like even depending how this testing goes for pistons even just for things like rods rockers all those steel parts which yeah we have to spend so long cleaning chuck them in the grate chuck them in this thing for 20 minutes yeehaw cheering all right guys it's the, it's the following day uh pulled this out last well, yesterday afternoon after our final 20 minutes as you can see it's cleaned the ring grooves up way more and even what's left i tested it with a bit of a ring uh because it's been penetrated it does just pretty much fall off as soon as you scrape it which is handy but i do reckon uh you know an, another cycle would probably have it sorted but you can see how clean this is but it does appear to be etching um so i want to try something different uh, so I believe it's probably just a combination of the CT18 and the process and having it soaking in the CT18. Although it says CT18 is safe for all services, it doesn't necessarily mean when it's left or to soak sort of thing or not used as um, instructed or intended. Uh, so one of the ones that I did see on a couple of forums when I was trying to research what to use, they reckon like 50-50 vinegar and water is a really good agent to use. So that's what I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna drain this tub. We're gonna try and get some cleaning vinegar we're going to try 50-50 vinegar and water and see how that goes as far as the aloe. We'll do another test. So um, hopefully if anyone that's interested in these things, all this testing might help you for when you get yours and, and sort it out. But anyway, to drain it, super simple. With the whole unit, they send you this little kit. Um, it's a tube, a fitting to go into the ball valve. They even send you a little hose clamp, super easy to set up. So I'm just going to drain the fluid into this tub 
and it's going to be happy days. So just do that, turn it on, boom, there she goes. Out she comes, drain the tub, drain it all out. And yeah, I'll get some vinegar and water and we'll see what we can do. All right guys, we've got vinegar, heaps and heaps of vinegar. So let's go get a vinegar and water solution going. Test another piston, we'll see how it goes. Right, oh guys, so we're good to go again. I've picked another piston, as you can see, just like the last one, it is pretty cruddy. Carbon build up, all the rest. I'm just gonna take the ring straight off this one, but let's see how the vinegar and water goes. Because the vinegar and water is completely clean, you can All right guys, so this is where we're at. We've done three, lots of 20 minutes with the vinegar, which is the same that we had done with this one in the CT18, and it is definitely not as good. So as you can see, still lots of carbon buildup. Um, the ring grooves are definitely not as clean. The piston's not as clean. Um, just uh, not as good, period. Uh, you can still see all the carbon and stuff up around that wrist pin on the rod, um, on the little end. Even this uh, ring, this oil retention ring, look how dirty it is compared to the one that was in the CT18. So, like that is a huge difference. Those two there, the CT18 versus the vinegar. So, the CT18 is definitely a much better agent. Um, so, I'll probably end up going switching back to that. Uh, so, what we might do, what I'll do, I'll let this cool down, drain the vinegar. I'm gonna switch back to the CT18, then I'm gonna give this another hit with the CT18. Like, look at how much is still on top of that piston compared to this one. And they've all had the same, they both had the same amount of time, just two different solutions. So, um, yeah, we'll go back to the CT18. I'll do another hit on this one and just see what it does. See how much cleaner it gets. Righto, guys, it's actually been a couple of days. We just got super busy. I got carried away. I forgot about this. Um, but with the CT18 added back in and another hit, this piston came up just as clean as the last one. So, the CT18 is really working really well. Um, but... Yeah, it is what it is. Might have to do some shorter stints uh, just to keep an eye on the alley, but at the end of the day, you just got to be careful with whatever solvent uh, you use and be aware that uh, on those softer, more porous metals that you could etch it. Just be aware, keep an eye on things, do shorter bursts. Obviously, these old pistons and stuff we didn't care about, so I was happy just to chuck them in and let it go. Uh, but for our last little bit for this video, our last little demonstration, we've got this lovely VY Malu that we're currently doing a complete cam kit. Um, full CNC heads, new exhaust, OTR, the whole berries. So we need to get these rockers cleaned up, rockers and rocker rails. As you can see, they are nice and filthy and gross. So just pulling these off so that all the valves shut, we can put the covers back on and then give the engine a blast. But while we're doing that, we'll get these into the sonic cleaner and see how they come up. So I'll, uh, I'll get them in the basket first, ready to go. All right, so there we go, guys. I've got the rails. I've even got all the push rods in there. Uh, we don't intend on reusing these push rods for this particular cam package, but I figured we'd just see how they clean up, just for argument's sake. All of our rockers, trunnion still in, all of our rocker bolts. What I will do first, just take these out to the wash bay and just give them a blast with the gurney. Not that I don't believe that they'll clean up without it, but more so just that they're still oily and there's no point in contaminating the solution that we've got in the Sonic Cleaner more than we have to. So I'll just give them a quick blast off with the gurney. I'm not going to use any solvents or anything, just blast them off just to try and get the oil off them. And then we'll chuck them in the Sonic Cleaner and seal the cleanup. Rightio, quick blast off. That is how they are going in. Chuck them in for a 20, pull them out, have a look, and then probably chuck them in for a second 20, and then we should be right. Rightio, so this is fresh out after 20 mins. Not bad, um, but it was coming up the temp as we started, so. What I'm gonna do, the alloy, obviously it looks pretty clean, um, so the alley rocker posts, I'm gonna take them out now, so we don't risk etching those. Give them a blast, I'm gonna chuck everything else back in for another 20, and then we'll pull it out, blast it off, and see how clean we're looking. All right, looking pretty damn good, hey? Looking nice and clean, and you can tell by the solution in there. And look, got all of the carbon off them push rods, so real nice, real good. So, last thing that I'm gonna do before I sign this video off as a test with this thing, we have these rocker rails. Now these came out of a car that, as you can see, was 
not very well maintained, a lot of moisture in the oil and absolutely caked in carbon. Now these have been soaked in degreaser, like really caustic degreaser. They've been soaked, they've been gurneyed, we've tried cleaning them up. They've sat outside for ages because we just couldn't clean them up, we gave up on them. We figured we're not gonna use them. So that's a pair out of the car. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and chuck these in <laughs> and just see, just see how it goes with these things. So we'll chuck them in for 20, it's all up to temp now. Um, so I'll only do the basket. We'll chuck these in for 20 and we'll see if it can actually work out or, or work through this real, real bad stuff. So that's one of the ones we just cleaned up that came out of this ute for reference. So that's what it should look like and that's how cake these are. So we'll see how they go. Boy, that's definitely better. Chuck it in for another probably 10 or 15 and pull it out and give it a blast and then we'll have a look. But the, it's definitely, definitely getting through it. All right, guys, another 10 minutes and a blast off and look how much better they are. So, um... I reckon another sort of 10, 20 minutes and they'd probably be just about sorted, which I will do, but I've run out of time today. It's knockoff time, gotta get going. But anyway, that's, you know, in a nutshell, this 30 litre Sonic cleaner. Really, really handy tool. Gonna be really handy for us. Um, yeah, we're stoked with it. So that's that, you've seen it. Um, I probably will keep playing around with different solutions of, of what to use in there that we can just sort of leave alloy in without having to worry about etching. But um, nonetheless, it, the, the setup works awesome, heats the, heats the solution pretty quick, and then obviously having the sonic cleaning ability. As you can see, like these were soaked in degreaser, blasted. Bo spent ages trying to clean these up, and you saw what they looked like when they went in, and yeah, freaking awesome how they look like when they come out, so. Yeah, awesome. I'll leave a link in the description. You can go buy it with that link if you want. It's, I think it's some sort of affiliate link, so I think I get some sort of kickback from it, but I'm not that worried, I just wanted to show off. This, uh, this unit, for those of you hobbyists in garages and stuff, it could be very, very useful to you. It's going to be very useful to us. Thanks for watching as always, guys. Smash like, smash subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out. See you, bye.